The Texans take on the Steelers. 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff in Steel Town. The Steelers are minus three and a half. Totals 45. We're four and two in our last six NFL tier package plays on patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also seven and one with a push in our last nine crowd pleaser teasers on that site as well. For more information on how you can join in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now, the Steelers are coming off a five-point victory over the Broncos. 2-0 straight up thus far in the season for Pittsburgh. The Steelers are averaging 26 points a game, and they rank in the top 10 in passing yards per game. Big Ben's completing 69% of his passes for 540 yards and five touchdowns. Juju's got two touchdown receptions, and Johnson's got 14 catches for 149 yards. The Steelers' defense also ranks in the top three and fewest rush yards allowed per game. Devin Bush leads the club in tackles with 14. T.J. Watt has two and a half sacks and an interception. The Steelers are in the top three and fewest yards allowed per play. Top 10 and fewest fourth quarter points allowed. They are taking on a winless Texans team, who's also 0-2 against the spread on the year as well. Houston's in the bottom 10 in scoring, bottom three in rush yards uh, per game they're giving up 34 points per contest by the way Johnson Fuller and Greenard are all listed as questionable for this Sunday's game now total wise Houston's week one contest against Kansas City got over the posted total Pittsburgh on the other side saw their week two contest against the Broncos fly over the number themselves give me the Pittsburgh Steelers minus three and a half and the over 45 in that game. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for NFL Week 3. But before we dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, I just want to quickly uh, remind you once again that we're currently 4-2 and two in our last six NFL tier package plays on the season on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. That's 67% in that category. We're also 7-1 and one with a push in our last nine crowd pleaser teasers on that site as well. For more information on how you can join in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's Patreon.com slash Brock Page. Moving on, we're going to take a look at the Panthers squaring off against the Chargers. 4.05 p.m. Eastern start time. The Chargers are the seven-point favorite. Totals 44. The Panthers are plus 234, an upset win on the road. But as rough as the Panthers have had it in weeks one and two, they still rank in the top 10 in offensive yards per play. They're also in the top five in passing yards per game. And of course, that's, you know, mostly thanks to Teddy Bridgewater, who is completing 72% of his passes for 636 yards. Robbie Anderson's caught 15 balls for 223 yards. And DJ Moore's also caught a dozen passes for 174 yards as well. The Panthers rank in the top three in the league in fourth quarter scoring. Now, I get it. I know what you're thinking. I'm not going to forget to talk about him. Christian McCaffrey is out indefinitely with an ankle. So look for that run game to be slowed down a little bit. Uh, but they are taking on a Chargers team who... Lost five out of their last six head-to-head -head meetings with the Panthers. Just one of five against the spread during that span as well. So historically, they don't play the Panthers well. Uh, and the Chargers are in the bottom five in the league in scoring bottom 10 in fourth quarter scoring as well. Their doctors are punch puncturing the lungs of their players. And they have a slew of guys on the injury report. We're talking about Pouncey and James. They're on the IR. Uh, Taylor, Jenkins, Jackson and Parham are listed as questionable. Tranquil is out indefinitely with an ankle. And if you're into historical trends, the Chargers have failed to cover the number in seven out of their last eight meetings with the NFC South. Now, total-wise, the Chargers are 2-0 to the under thus far in the season. They're also averaging just 18 points per contest. Give me the Carolina Panthers plus seven, keeping this one close, and the under 44 in that contest. Next matchup, it is going to be Jets, Colts, 4.05 p.m. East. The Colts are the 11-point favorite at home. Totals 43 and a hook. Indy's in the top 10 in pass yards per game. Top three in offensive time of possession. Phillip Rivers is completing 78% of his passes. 
and he's thrown for 577 yards already. T.Y. Hilton's averaging 12 yards a reception. And tight end Mo Alley-Cox has seven catches for a total of 131 yards. The Colts rank in the top five in fewest rush yards allowed per game. Top three in fewest passing yards allowed as well. Darius Leonard has 16 tackles on the season. DeForest Buckner has one and a half sacks, three tackles for loss. And Danico Autry also has a couple of sacks on the season as well for the Colts. Now, Indy has won 12 out of their last 15 ball games at Lucas Oil Stadium. Indy's in the top three and fewest yards allowed per play. They're taking on a Jets team who has a bunch of guys banged up right now. Le'Veon Bell's on the IR. Hogan, Crowder, and Perriman are all listed as questionable. And that's pretty much most of Darnold's receiving core right there. But we're not done. McGovern, Wilson, and Mollette are still uh, listed as questionable for the Jets for this Sunday. New York is winless on the season, and they rank in the bottom three in scoring, bottom three in yards per play. The Jets are averaging just 178 yards passing, uh, as well as 78 yards on the ground per game. And when it comes to the total on this one, both of the uh, of the Jets week one and week two contests did get over the posted total. Their defense might just allow this one to get over uh, without the help. Uh, you know, they might just let it get over themselves. Now the Colts on the other side, they saw their week one matchup against Jacksonville fly over the total themselves. Give me the Indianapolis Colts minus 11 and the over 43 and a half in that game. Next matchup, Lions, Cards, 425 p.m. Eastern start time. The Cardinals are minus six, total 54 and a hook. The Cardinals are 2-0 straight up on the season, 2-0 against the spread. And as good as Kyler Murray's been passing the football, the Cards are in the top five in the league in rushing yards per game. Uh, they're also in the top 10 in offensive time of possession. No real surprise there. Kyler's run for 158 yards on the ground, and he's got three touchdowns already rushing. He's averaging 7.5 yards per rush. Kenyon Drake's also run the ball 36 times for 146 yards himself. And when Kyler actually decides to throw it, it normally goes to DeAndre Hopkins, who has 22 catches for 219 and a touchdown. The Arizona defense on the other side ranks in the top three in the league and fewest points allowed, top 10 and fewest pass yards allowed as well. Arizona has seven sacks on the season, while safety Buda Baker leads the club in tackles with 20. They're taking on a Detroit squad who's failed to cover the point spread in their two losses thus far in the season. The, Ly uh, the Lions are giving up 35 points per game, and they rank in the top five in most yards allowed per play. They're also giving up 204 yards per game on the ground, and they do rank in the top three in most fourth quarter points allowed. Now, Trufant, Williams, Vitae, Galladay, and Bryant are all listed as questionable for this Sunday's action. Keep an eye on those guys. And when it comes to the total on this one, Detroit's 2-0 to the over thus far in this season. Arizona could very well put it over themselves. Give me the Arizona Cardinals minus 6 and the over 54.5 in that game. Next contest, Cowboys-Seahawks, 425 p.m. Eastern start time. The Seahawks are minus five, totals 56. And if you like the Cowboys in an upset, they're plus $1.85 for some money line cash. The Cowboys are in the bottom five in the league in offensive time of possession. They're also in the top 10 in most points allowed per game. Now, Sean Lee and Leighton Vander Esch are on the IR. Uh, two very important linebacker, uh, linebackers. Actually, Vander Esch is uh, supposed to be Lee's replacement. So really, no surprise there about Sean Lee. Just cut the dude already. Uh, he can't stay healthy. So anyway, reliable tight end. Blake Jarwin's also out for the season. Irving's out two to four weeks with a knee. And of course, Smith and Lawrence are listed as questionable. These guys are really banged up right now. Now, not a lot of people talking about it. Uh, but this Dallas defense uh, ranks in the top 10 in most pass yards allowed per game. They also give up 133 yards on the ground per game as well. They're taking on Russell Wilson, who's cooking right now. He's thrown for 610 yards and nine touchdowns already. And, uh, oh, yeah, this dude's completing 83% of his passes. Now, DK Metcalf's caught eight balls for a buck 87 and two scores. And scat man Tyler Lockett has also has, uh, he also has 15 receptions for 159 yards and a score. 
Oddly enough, running back Chris Carson leads the receiving core in touchdown receptions. He's housed it, uh, he's housed it three times in the air this season. The Hawks rank in the top three in scoring, top three in yards per play. Seattle successfully covered the number in their last six straight meetings with the NFC East. They're also in the top three in the league in fewest rush yards allowed. They're giving up just 69 yards on the ground per game. Now, total-wise, Seattle's 2-0 to the over on the season thus far. Meanwhile, the Cowboys on the other side saw their Week 2 meeting with the Falcons reach 79 total points. Give me the Seahawks minus 5 and the over 56 in that contest. Next matchup, Bucks broncos 425 p.m. East. The Bucks are the six-point favorite on the road here. Totals 43 and a half. Tampa scoring 27 points a game as Tom Brady's thrown for 456 yards and three touchdowns. Mike Evans has eight catches for 106 and a couple of scores. And Leonard Fournette's gained 108 uh, yards on the ground here and two touchdowns himself. Chris Godwin's also been upgraded to probable for Sunday's action. The Buccaneers rank in the top 10 in the league in first quarter scoring. They're also in the top five in defensive takeaways. The Broncos, on the other side, are winless on the season. Bottom three in scoring, bottom 10 in yards per play. Starting quarterback Drew, uh, Drew Locke. <laughs> Let's try it again. Starting quarterback Drew Locke is out and definitely with a shoulder. Running back Phillip Lindsay is also questionable with a uh, toe. Miller, Boyer, and Jones are on the IR. Barron's questionable. Walker and Harris are out. This Denver defense has allowed 274 yards per game through the air, and they rank in the bottom 10 in fourth quarter scoring. Now, total-wise, Denver's Week 2 contest against the Steelers got over the posted total. Meanwhile, the Bucks on the other side, they are 2-0 to the over thus far for the season. So with all that said and done, give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus 6 and the over 43.5 in that game.